Let me read to you a passage from the 17th chapter of St. John's Gospel, verses 11 to 19. It's the Gospel for Wednesday of the seventh week of Eastertide. St. John writes, Jesus raised his eyes to heaven and said, Holy Father, keep true to your name those you have given to me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I kept true to your name those you gave me. I have watched over them, so that none, of, none has been lost except the son of perdition, in fulfilment of the scriptures. I am coming to you now, but I say these things while I am still in the world, so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but the, that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I dedicate myself, that they too may be dedicated in the truth. That's John chapter 17, verses 11 to 19. What does it suggest to us? Well, it suggests being in Christ. You know, I remember years ago when I was studying philosophy at university, the professor of the department, who happened to be, well, the supervisor of my research, referred to one of his colleagues. He told me in passing that he was, the colleague, was an Hegelian. He was, that is to say, a disciple, a follower of Hegel. There are those who are followers of the philosophy of Marx or Sartre, Wittgenstein, Russell, Marcel and various others. The Catholic Church has recommended various of her philosophers, but especially the philosophy contained in the thought of Thomas Aquinas. In all of these cases, it is the man's thought and doctrine that is accepted and followed. One becomes a disciple of the man's thought. The teacher himself, say Socrates or Plato or Aristotle or Plotinus or Cicero as the case may be, could be long since dead and therefore quite vanished as a living presence from the scene. It is his thought and teaching expressed in the records of his writing which continue to command influence. It is conceivable that a follower of Hegel's philosophy might have little interest in Hegel himself. Many have been enamoured of the philosophy of Friedrich Nietzsche, but one would be hard put to see how, how many could be enamoured of Nietzsche himself. After a turbulent life, he ended his days out of his mind. But notice how our Lord refers to his disciples. They must certainly follow his teaching with all their energy, but in the first instance what counts is their relationship with him. This relationship with Jesus is God's creation. It is the work of God. They have been given to Jesus by the Father. The disciple has been given to Jesus by the Father. Holy Father, keep true to your name those you have given to me, so that they may be one as we are one. They belong to Jesus in order for him to care for them, so that he might keep them true to the Father's name. Every disciple of Christ may say that he belongs to Jesus. He finds himself as belonging to Jesus by the gift of the Father. He does not approach Jesus as one who is separated from him. He is already the gift of the Father to Jesus, and as this gift, he receives the word of Jesus, his Master, a word to which he must adhere. So the primary thing about being a disciple of Jesus Christ is being faithful to the personal relationship with Christ in which he has been placed by God himself. You know, there is a more general observation to be made here 
about our fundamental situation. It relates to what I've just said. Following on the isolating perspective that was propounded by Descartes, modern man tends to regard himself as being, in the first instance, isolated, apart. From his isolation and separation from other persons and things, he seeks relationships. Descartes began with the self that thinks in isolation. Descartes built his system, his philosophical system, from the fact of personal thought. I think, therefore I am. His thought confirms his existence to himself. But this starting point that was chosen by Descartes isolates him from the world with which he must then establish a connection. Modern man prizes friendship, but he tends to come at it from a prior solitariness. It is this starting point that is so erroneous, and which has had such a baleful effect on the philosophy of the last few centuries. Man's true starting point is not his isolated reflection on himself precisely as a being who thinks, but his being part of the world and in profound relationship with others. That's the starting point. His relationships with others are a primary and fundamental given that include his own action. He is an acting person and not just a thinking one. His action is one, is as one who is part of the external world and in deep relationships with others, such as his family and friends. They are a given. He finds himself to be interconnected with others and not, in the first instance, solitary and disconnected from the world. Hence our Lord's words in today's Gospel are part of a peace with the reality of human life as man finds it to be. The disciple of Jesus Christ learns from his Master that the Father has, has made of him a gift to his beloved Son. We are by God's gift in relationship with Jesus. We are God's gift to Jesus who has given his life for us and for our salvation. This is what it means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. It is from this starting point of being in him that we follow the teaching of him who is the, who is the master. That having been said, it is far more crucial that we adhere to the teaching of the master than it is for any disciple of any other philosopher or leader of thought and religion. If we do not follow his teaching, the teaching of Jesus, despite the gift of the Father that the Father has made of us to the Son, we shall be lost. I have watched over them so that none, so that none has been lost except the Son of Perdition in fulfilment of the Scriptures. We must be faithful to the word of the Master. As our Lord says, they are not of this world even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. Let us then rejoice that we have by the grace of God been placed in Christ. And let us resolve to live in him by obedience to his word.